Hi, my name is Grant Hobson. I work as a finance analyst. Uh, today I'm going to talk you through some business maths uh, calculations and ratios. How to calculate return on equity. Um, the return on equity calculation uh, simply shows um, the amount of income that's uh, returned from the money invested into the company. It's a measure of the profitability, so how well we're doing with the money that gets invested, um, and it should be used in conjunction with several other uh, financial performance measures uh, to establish how well the company's performing. Uh, we're going to run through uh, an example now, um, but before we do, we'll just say that a company with, say, 25%, 30% um, return on equity is deemed to be performing uh, really well. Um, Whereas if you're below 5%, then it's deemed to be bad performance. That's sort of the two extremes that we'd look at. Um, so we'll run through the examples now to demonstrate this. So in terms of the formulas that we're going to need to complete the calculation, uh, the formula one, the return on equity calculation, is simply your net income divided by your shareholder's equity. To calculate shareholder's equity, um, you just need to know that it's the total assets minus your total liabilities. Um, so you'll be using both the income statement and the balance sheet to get your figures for this calculation. If we take example one, um, we're going to look at um, over two periods because you basically take um, your average through the year. So you need your opening numbers, which would be the closing of one financial year, um, and then your closing figures for the, like, the current financial year that you're using to uh, compute the data. So if we look at, say, 2008, we're going to say that a company had assets of 1.5 million and it had liabilities of 700,000, which gives shareholders equity of 800,000. Uh, by the end of uh, financial year 09, we're going to say that the assets had increased to 1750, and the liabilities had also increased and up to 980,000. So shareholders equity had actually gone down to 770,000 pounds. We're going to say from the income statement and pick out the net profit of the company. So we're going to say in this example it was £220,000. So return on equity is simply your net profit, 220, divided by your two um, figures for your shareholders' equity, which gives you a return on equity of 28%, which as it's above your 25%, we'd say that that's really good performance, uh, stretching as well as exceptional performance. If we take a second example, so we're now going to say we're a company who's got assets of 5 million in one year. Very few liabilities, so £120,000 liabilities. The closing point at the current year, we've got an increase in your assets up to 6 million. And then we've got liabilities one, two, five, oh. So we've got shareholders' equity in one year of 4.88 million. In the following year, for a big increase in liabilities, it's fairly consistent at 4.750. We're going to keep the net profit the same as in the previous calculation, £220,000. So we see that the return on equity there, if we take the average shareholders' equity, we use that. So we divide them 220 by the average, gives us a return on equity of 5%. So completely different to where we were in example one, even with the same net profits, the company's not using the funds it's got from its shareholders. Um, anywhere as well as example one, uh, so this 5% is deemed to be bad. We just need, need to be careful that we don't be deceived by a high return on equity because that can happen. Um, so you've got companies who have excessive debt levels and that, therefore in, uh, they're really highly leveraged and are therefore risky companies. Um, so it just needs to be taken into consideration um, when doing the calculation.